Good evening, everybody here with us in New Beginnings Church and those who might be online tonight. Welcome to New Beginnings. Um, Pastor Joe has had a procedure today and he will not be joining us. So we need to continue to keep him in prayer. So tonight, because we're still in the Advent season, we're going to talk about something that is particularly relevant during Advent, but relevant every day of our lives. We're going to talk about light. Okay, in the first place, what is light? The absence of darkness. Hmm. She got it. She got it. That's what it is. Can you expound on that? Yes. Thank you for your. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's the absence of darkness. That's correct. When you think about light, can you think of some other adjectives to describe it? Brilliant, enlightenment, awesome. Well, actually, yeah. Yeah. actually, yes, that's a good one. What about illumination? Illumination. Illumination, okay. Holiness. Um, all the things that God is are in light. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning. Where did light come from? Carol should have it. Genesis 1, where is it? Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 3 through 5. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, so... Light comes from the Lord. It is definitely a gift of God. So we see in Genesis, so this is a little bit of a wayward thing, but what are there ways of light besides the natural light that we see dividing the morning and night? What other forms of light would they have? Moonlight. God is about having a relationship with his people, okay? He creates the light and he creates the darkness, okay? And he wants to show himself strong on behalf of his people. He wants to speak to his people on some level. In the Old Testament, we see light in a different, it's still light, but it's different. Think about Moses on the backside of a desert. What happened? Carol. Yes, the burning bush. Fire is also light too. And fire can also be a way that the Lord speaks. God was always looking to speak to his people. We see him speaking to Adam and Eve in the garden. Once that door closed, then he started speaking in other ways. It's not the only way. So we see him also in Exodus. In Exodus 3-2. No, let's go to Exodus 13, 21. So God's out there. People are down here. And God's a communicator. He's illuminating the light in the darkness. But he also wants to communicate with us. 13, Exodus 13, 21. You got that, Carol? John Paul? I got it. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night, in a pillar of fire, to give them light, so that it could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place in front of the people. Amen. Amen. What do you get from this? Uh, 
but God was leading his people where he wanted them to go. Amen. Does God still lead us today? Yeah. Absolutely. He started in the beginning. It's continuing. And he never left them. There wasn't a time that he wasn't there. He's God in the midst of them. And he, he is the creator of life. He is the light. We'll get to that. Okay, so moving forward, we see David in the Psalms. We all love the Psalms. I love the Psalms. Okay, so let's go to Psalm 1828. And you're all probably mostly aware that David wrote the majority of the Psalms. And he was a man after God's heart. He was intimate with God, but he definitely fell multiple times. But it was his heart that God responded to. Eighteen twenty-eight. Mm-hmm. Yep. You Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Amen. Okay. Um, Psalm twenty-seven, one. Somebody should know this. <clears throat> <laughs> What's the first word? The Lord. I tell you, or somebody reads it. You got it? Twenty seven one. Mm-hmm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. Amen. So he's our light and our salvation. What so what is what in that instance does light mean? He's my light. He's my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That's true. Very good. Very good. I'm glad to hear you're on tonight. <laughs> but thank you for joining us. No problem. There's a lot of people coughing now. So we're talking about he's our light and our salvation. Okay, God had a plan from Genesis to Revelation. He had a plan. And the light is included in that. Okay, then um, Psalm 89.15. Eighty-nine, fifteen. Mm-hmm. Blessed are those who have learned to obey you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. Okay, what do you think it means to walk in the light of His presence? Live as I'm Christ in life. Amen. Amen. Put it on Christ. Yeah. Okay. Did they know Christ back then? Remember, this is Old Testament. Did they know? No. 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 But there had been laws written. And where do we see the law presented to the Israelites? In the Torah. In the Ten Commandments. On Sinai, correct. Correct. The law was given. Okay? And so the Jews were very diligent about writing, you know, after the incident where the commandments were broken, God rewrote them. They were diligent about writing out. So let's go to Psalm 119, 105. 105? Mm-hmm. Psalm 119, which is the longest psalm in the yeah. Bible. Uh, your word is a lamb to my feet and a light for my path. Okay, amen. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that's the, we see that as God had given them the light in the day. He gave them the pillar of fire. He gave Moses the burning. It's a way to communicate, to lead them and guide them. Okay. This is one of my favorites. Psalm 119, 130. Sing 
He will impose with your words to give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Okay. Gloria, you want to read it again? David just read it. The interest, the interest of your word gives light. Yes. It gives understanding to the simple. Okay, remember that. The entrance of your word. David, let's go to John 1. The word becomes flesh. 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 Uh -huh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Then all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made, that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that though through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gave light to everything was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world it was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or husband will, but born of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so it says in Psalm 119, the entrance of the word gives light. Okay, Jesus is the word. God's a communicator. The word, he communicates through his word. Okay, and it brings light to us. We're able to discern, we're able to see our paths, we're able to see so many things. Okay, then let's go to John 3, 19 through 20. Now this is John's testimony. When the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, do not fail to confess, but screaming, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? He said, you're not going to take back the rubbish you sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in a whirlwind, Isaiah and the prophet, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees were then do you baptize if you're not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Okay, I think you went past where I wanted to go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> where, what did you say? John 3, 19 through 20. John. John 3. John 3. Mm -hmm. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. But people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what is done has been done in the sight of God. Amen. The scripture says that there's nothing hidden from God. There's nothing. Okay. So, moving on, let's go to John 8, 12. I love that, John 8, 12.
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Okay. Going back to John 1. Okay. A couple pages back. Jesus says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In 8.12, we see Jesus saying the same thing. He's the light in the life of men. That's pretty profound. What was the one you read? Yeah. This was, um, in him was the life, and the light was of men. He, his, he is the light of men. It's John 1.4. 1, 1, then go to John 8.12. Now let's go to John twelve thirty five. You can see that John had a lot to say about the light. John twelve. What did you say? John twelve thirty five. Then Jesus told them, "You are going to have the light just a little while longer." Walk while you have the light before darkness, darkness overtakes you. You are walking in the dark, does not know where you are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of the light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Amen. Amen. And he's telling them what? This is, he's predicting, this is, um, He's predicting his death, and he's telling the disciples and the Jews that he's getting ready to go. Uh, so walk in the light. The time is coming. Okay, so then John twelve forty four. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me has seen the one who sent me. I have come into the light, into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should be in darkness. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I will not judge that person. For I did not judge the, come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the ones who reject, rejects me. And who does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. Okay. For I did not speak on my own. But the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whoever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Amen. Okay, so if he who believes in Jesus. Will have the light. Okay. Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think he lights your path? Yeah. Amen. Do you think he gives you wisdom oh, yeah. and discernment? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, okay. So Jesus is telling him there's only a little while left. I'm going, I'm leaving you. So walk in the light. Amen. Amen. They didn't believe him. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. We're out of John now. We're moving on. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Hold on. Pastor's been in Matthew 5. Matthew, who's been in Matthew 5? Huh? Matthew 5. 13 through 16. Five, 15. Oh, 13 through 16. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? 
is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Same way, let your light shine unto others that you may see the good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Okay. So, it says we're the light of the world. We're not to put our light under a basket. Um, so, it could give, how could we how could we be the light to anybody? How could we? Say what? Testify. Yes, by testifying. Okay. Testifying of what the Lord has done, right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, what do you think about the darkness that surrounds us now? And looking at your own life, are we sharing Jesus more now because as we see the days approaching, you know, those of us who've been in the faith for a while and have read the end of the book know that, or that we feel, we don't know, but we feel that time is short so that we need to be a light in this dark world. You know, there's a whole whole lot of people who do not know Jesus yet. And yep. so it's on our heart to share Jesus. You know, not everybody wants but how to. Many of us still? That's that's my but point. If the Lord is sharing right, if the Lord we are sharing Jesus today than there was when you when I first got saved. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't care who I ran into. I would tell them. Yeah. As time goes on, now I I still do. Mm -hmm. But it's it's in a different way. But I am, right, it's in a different way and a different approach. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't see it. Right. So even if we don't see it, I think that we should be, God's word can challenge us to do better in that avenue. We need to share. You know, yeah. we have family, yeah. we have friends, we have neighbors, we have, you know, and then there's the world. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the world is what the Holy Spirit told us to witness to. Um, and so I, I think that it's something that we need to do. I need to do better than I'm doing now. You know. Um, it, I, I agree with all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's all of it. Yeah. And God's word is supposed to challenge us. We're not supposed to hear it and walk away and do nothing. You know. We're supposed right. to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Okay. Yeah, and, and I just want to interject one thing. Sure. I have thought two people put it with me, okay, supposedly put it with me. And I am shocked at what they put in. One was passed in Fury of Abel Games. And I never saw so much advocacy and adding on characters that weren't even in this book that had nothing to do with the story. Mm -hmm. And I, I was watching right now another one, a supposed Christian, and had really the story to keep the book about. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. This is what we're up against. But what does God say in the end times? He's, yeah, he says in the end. Right, and even if they know what he's telling them, some of them, mm -hmm. they're believing what they're seeing because they haven't. Right, right. Hollywood and did a better job of, 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 of bringing out the story of the Bible than these people who say that they're Christians are doing. Right. So everybody I'm wants talking. Christianity to be easy. They want it to be God in their way, that I can live any old which way. You know what I mean? People don't want to necessarily okay. hear. Yeah. Right. But. They, they invent characters and, oh well. Yeah. I But God is going to hold them accountable for their behavior, just like he will hold us accountable for ours, you know. 
Yeah. So, but if you don't know truth, you don't know truth. So if you haven't read the yeah. word or have at least studied it, then, um, but God said in the end, there would be heresy, apostasy, the, you know, the apostate church. So, okay. I, I talked to Pastor Joe about this the other day. Uh-huh. He said to me, he said, he's an eastbound. Amen. Amen. And if you're mature enough in the Lord, that's not a problem. You know what I mean? And because we know the Holy Spirit dwells in us, and he will give us wisdom and discernment. You know, you can just listen sometimes, and you know it's wrong. You know, I know that you personally have read the, a lot of word. You've got a lot of word in you. So you would be able to, to notice it. it. The problem is that a lot of people don't have the word, just like Gloria was saying. You know, they don't. Yep. So. I just want to say the same thing with this service. You have to be like a Marine, and that's what I want. I heard it. I took it out of the Bible. If it didn't say it, I didn't believe it. Or if they distorted it, if it wasn't there, that I couldn't read it out. Amen. 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 Well, you said it at the beginning, we're to be like Bereans, you know, to check it out. Okay. All righty. When people tell me things, that, I'm sorry, but when people tell me things, I say, show me the scripture. Me too. Me too. Me too. Right on. <laughs> or they try to find it and I'm it sorry. opens their eyes, you know. Um, right. Uh-huh. So, 1 John 1. I'm sorry. That's Okay. 1 John 1, 5 to 7. Well, we were in Matthew. We were in Matthew, yeah, okay. talking about the salt and the light. Yeah, the light, the light of the world. Mm-hmm, yep. 1 John 1. Yep. Yeah. Not John, 1 John. 1 John. we have heard from him and he clear God is light in him there is no darkness at all if we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness we lie and do not live by the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another the blood of Jesus his son purifies from all sin Amen. Amen. Anybody got any insight on that? What is it? How do we walk in the light? Read the word. Yeah. Amen. Read the word. Or, or even read the word. Yeah. Amen. Read the word. Or even obeying just what he says. Mm-hmm. Doer, be a doer, not just a hearer, right? And yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And avoid areas that are a problem for us. You know, we're not to be the in dark. Te- yeah, the dark. Exactly. The darkness. The um, There's all kinds of people out there. Some are following the Lord and some aren't. There's a common, let me read this. Um, this is in from Chuck Smith. Walking in darkness, there are many people who profess to know God and to have fellowship with him, and yet they walk in darkness contrary to the commands of God. 
They're only fooling themselves. The idea that you can have right. fellowship with God without turning away from us is not the only way. Real fellowship with God changes us from within. Amen. I can have a wonderful prayer life and feel very close to God, but I'm living a lie if I'm not also turning away from sin. It is not true fellowship. Amen. That was a comment by Chuck Smith. Yes. I think the other thing is that you can be, quote, resistant to your religion and believe that you're in life, but you're not. It's not fellowship with God. It's fellowship with your religion. I could see that. You know, legalistic religion. Um, I could see that. Can you give me an, so, give me an example. Give me an example, Gloria. commented the Pharisees. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. All right. Moving on, we're going to 1 Peter 2 9. One Peter two nine. Yes. Do you know what it is? No, I don't. Um, Carol's gonna I'm not gonna pretend I do. <laughs> Carol's gonna Carol's gonna yeah, sing it. Oh, she's gonna sing it. <laughs> Okay, Carol, start singing. But ye are a chosen generation, chosen people, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you may proclaim the excellencies of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He was once not called the Lord, but you are his people. Okay, so where did he call us from? Darkness. Where did he call us to go to? Where are we going? Marvelous light. The light. Is there darkness in heaven? No. How do you know? 
to Revelation 22, either 21 or 22, it's talking about the New Jerusalem. Hmm? 21.9, Gloria said. I don't have my notes on that. Well, that's where it starts. Mm-hmm. The New Jerusalem, part of the land.
you know, and the Holy Spirit reveals truth to us, right? When we're reading it, yep. we're convicted by it. You know, the Holy Spirit is going to challenge us, convict us, but we're supposed to walk in truth. Thy word, O Lord, is truth. And Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Mm -hmm. And whatever you put into your relationship with God is going to be what you get out of it. If you want to be a pew sitter and listen to the message, which is always good, and not let it change you, then you're not going to get the same thing as somebody who's digging for God's word. It does make yeah. a difference. And it makes a difference of your walk. Because when you know the truth, it's a whole lot easier to walk than when you're walking in the darkness. You know, that was good. That was good, Charlie. That was good. And I do know again that you're studying the word. Good job. Good job. Does anybody have any experience about walking in the light and what the light means to you? When have you know? Sometimes people have seen the light. You know, I saw the. Isn't there a song I saw the light? Amen. And that's another form of it. Many times when we read the Bible, instead of taking what it's saying to stand on our light, we look at it and say, that person needs to read this. Meaning somebody else. Somebody else. Yeah, yep. Because, yeah, we all read. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Amen. Instead of just thinking to someone else, when it could apply to us, ourselves. Yeah, we always have to check ourselves. Amen. I'm going to share a brief, a brief. Amen. Amen. About ten years ago, I was working in a, a shelter, and I just started volunteering there. I had no intention of spending the next eight years there. Um, but when I walked through the shelter, there was. Um, very, very dark, very dark. And the word that God gave me was out of one of John 1. He is the light of the world. The world does not understand it and cannot overcome it. My journey, yep, yep, yep. Yep, my journey in that dark place, and it was dark because the people didn't know the word. They were, you know, from different cultures and they needed Jesus is what they needed. and uh, But it was a word, so I got one of those little pass-it-on cards, and I put it on my desk. And when times when I'm like, oh, my gosh, it is so dark in here. It's, I'm talking spiritually dark. and um, But I would say, but God is bigger than the world. Jesus is not overcome by the world. The world is overcome by Jesus. Again, it's, it's sharing our testimony and sharing, you know, God gave me some opportunities there to share Jesus. But sometimes when we go into dark places, we need to have a word from the Lord to guard our heart, to lead us and guide us, and to just give us the confidence that we're where God wants us to be. And so, so that was my big one. Amen. Now I move the little card onto my dresser. So, as a reminder of God's word. So, I wish everybody was here with us tonight because we are going to light candles. Because we're not to curse the darkness. We're to light the candles. So, what we would normally do on Christmas Eve, we're going to do tonight. So, somebody, so there's five of us here. 
And I wish I had thought to tell you in advance. So you could have had a, a light. So take, take one and you could make sure everybody else has it. This is my favorite part of the Sunday service for Christmas. And we're going to sing Silent Night. I know it's with my prom voice. <laughs> well, I don't have a good voice either, but it's. What's your voice here? I want to know who sent it and make it. The world. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. That's beautiful. Somebody just told me I can hear that. That's a shirt. I know. Who wants to lead? Anybody want to lead? Silent night? Yeah. Yeah. Until we all get our candles.
Father God, that your healing touch will be upon him this very night. Father God, that he will sleep in peace tonight, Lord, and you will make a way, Lord. God rule and reign in his heart, in his house, in his marriage, in his car, everywhere he goes. May he proclaim that Jesus is Lord and the peace of God be with him, Lord. And Father God, I intercede tonight for the Middle East. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Father God, I pray protection for Jerusalem. And I pray, Lord, that you bring the hostages home. Only you can heal the heart. Only you can heal the knee. We pray and plead the blood of Jesus over that area. We pray that you give the terrorists or the Palestinians, whoever needs to see you tonight, and they all do, Lord, that you would walk through, be the God in the midst of the Middle East this very night, Lord. Be glorified, be honored, Lord. But my prayer, along with everybody else's, bring the hostages home. It's time, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, for everything you do for us every single day. You're a great and mighty God, and we love you. We want to know you more, serve you more, and Father God, to do your will and share your word. And I just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So look, you can't see this because you're not here, and we wish you were. But see how much light, there's only five of us, and see how much light. So if we have the light of Jesus in us, and that's what scripture says, that's the light that we bring to people. People will either understand it and want it, or they'll reject it. It's our job to just present it in them. So thank you. Thank you, one and all, for participating tonight. Yeah. Pastor Joe should be back by next week. He'll be here Sunday, but he should be back next week. But, <laughs> but thank you. Well, I appreciate you, you coming. So. And I hope you feel better. Yes, feel better. Sunday. Good. 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 All right, guys. All right. Thanks for coming, Charlie. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Bye bye. Make sure these are all out. Yeah.